Praise be to Jesus Christ. In the previous video, we talked about how modern Judaism is different from biblical Judaism. And we looked at some evidence from the letter to the Hebrews showing that the Eucharistic sacrifice that we have today um, is based not in modern Judaism, but in the Jewish worship at Mount Sinai and in the first temple of Jerusalem. Okay, so uh, in that kind of early biblical uh, first temple or original meeting tent Jewish worship, we can find several rituals that were practiced by the priests of Israel that all have some kind of share in the prefigurement of the Eucharist, uh, which is something like foreshadowing, prefigurement that is. So one of these uh, parallels, one of these prefigurements, uh, was called the daily offering or the twice daily sacrifice. This was one of the covenant rites that were given to the Israelites. So this sacrifice is described in Numbers chapter 28, verses one to eight. And there it outlines that the twice daily sacrifices were to be offered by every priest who was ordained for the Sinai Covenant. So it involved the offering of a lamb in the morning and the offering of a lamb in the afternoon. And so this lamb was slaughtered and brought to the altar of sacrifice known as the Holocaust altar. And there when they brought the lamb there, the lamb was fully immolated, meaning that it was fully burned and nothing of this lamb was to be returned back to anyone because the body of that sacrificed lamb was fully sent to God. So during that process, bread and wine were presented at that altar of sacrifice, that Holocaust altar, where alongside the blood that was poured out of the lamb at the altar, the presented wine would be poured out as well at the foot of that altar. So this sacrifice took place on every day of the year, even on Passover. So there's like obvious parallels that you can find in the presentation of bread and wine at a sacrificial altar, but probably the most compelling and thought-provoking parallel is that pairing of the blood that is shed uh, by the lamb and the wine that is poured out at the foot of that altar of sacrifice, the Holocaust altar. So that is a clear prefigurement of the connection between the wine that becomes the blood of Christ at the Last Supper and the blood of Christ that is violently poured out at the foot of the cross, with the cross being the Holocaust altar where Christ the Lamb was sacrificed. So this is really important to emphasize nowadays in particular, because uh, nowadays in modern theology, there's this bad tendency to emphasize, super emphasize the meal aspect of the Last Supper while diminishing that sacrifice element. But what this parallel is showing us is that the twice daily sacrifice is explicitly pointing to the fact that the sacrificial element is what completes the Last Supper. So in other words, the sacrifice that is initiated with the body and blood of God at that hallowed evening of the Last Supper only finishes, only finds its completion with the shedding of the blood of God on the next day. So to recap, the Passover sacrifice doesn't finish at the Last Supper. It continues on and only finishes when the blood of the Lamb of God is spilled on the altar of the cross the very next day. So think of that the next time you're at the Holy Kurbana, because at every Kurbana, we're taken outside of time to witness that one death of the Divine Lamb of God. Stay blessed.